cousin, female 24, falsely accused me, male 31, of a horrible crime. Now my family is contacting me after almost 10 years. It's pretty much like the title says, I just feel so lost on what to do. This is tearing up wounds and old rage is building again. Let me give some backstory. I've grew up in what was probably the most normal of normal households. Parents worked a lot, but still managed to care for me and my three older sisters. We were never super close as a family, but never had any issues either. Same goes for my extended family. They always lived a few hours away, but we saw each other during summer holidays or Christmas and always got along great. But when we got older, we naturally grew apart as everyone had their own lives. I'm 31 now, but in 2014, when I was 22 and attending uni, I got a phone call from my mother that turned my life upside down. I remember I didn't even answer at first because I was gaming with friends, but she called again immediately after the first call. This was an unwritten rule in the family. If you call twice like that, it's important, like someone died important. So when she called again, I excused myself and answered, only to hear chaos in the other end, like people were arguing. But when my mom realized I had answered, it sounded like she went to another room and closed the door. I just asked what was going on, and I heard her crying. My memory of this conversation is a bit blurry, but she basically asked me if I had something to confess to her regarding Eve. Eve is my cousin on my mom's side and is seven years younger than me, 15 at the time. At that point, I hadn't even seen Eve for several years. I just said no and asked what this is about. She just cried even harder and started accusing me of violating Eve back when we were children. That Eve had told everything to my sister and that my sister told my mother and my aunt. Eve had told them that back when she was 9 and I 16, she'd been playing in my room. When I came in and started feeling her under her clothes and kissing her, my mother screamed at me to say something, but I couldn't even speak. It was all so absurd, I remember thinking that must be some bad joke. The last thing I remember saying was that it's not true and that Eve is lying. But then my mom goes on saying how Eve gave such a detailed description of where and how. Then she kept asking something like, did you do this? Did you do this? And I just screamed back at her no each time. It all ended with my mom putting me on speaker and both my mom and dad saying that they don't want anything to do with me and to never contact them again. Two of my sisters texted me later that day, pretty much saying that I'm disgusting and then blocked me. I know it's weird, but after that call I went to have a long shower. To this day I still don't know why I did that. After coming down, I started calling and texting everyone, even Eve. No one answered and the ones who hadn't blocked my number by then quickly did so. The only thing I heard back was from my father, who texted me to stop contacting them and that they need to heal. That was 9 years ago and I haven't spoken to anyone in my family since that day. To say this messed me up is an understatement. I was living in a haze for weeks after that and hardly ate at all. It didn't help that this was right before I was supposed to defend my bachelor's thesis and was already stressed out. Luckily my co-writer sensed something was up and saved me by controlling the conversation so that I got the easy parts. Without him, I'm sure I would have failed. Needless to say, no one came to my graduation. Then started the worst period of my life. I spent the first year expecting the cops to knock on my door and arresting me for a crime I didn't commit. I didn't land any jobs, just living off my saved money. I drank a lot and did oxy. I also grew resentful and violent. The only reason I didn't hurt anyone is because no one was around. My neighbor called the cops on me once after I had smashed a glass, but I managed to convince the officers that I had just dropped it and they went away since there were no others inside my apartment. Instead of sleeping, I spent my nights planning how I could hurt Eve and make sure no one ever found out, even thinking how I could actually do the things she'd accused me of but much worse. I know, I'm not proud of that. I landed my first real job in my field in late 2015, only then did things start to improve. I focused all my time on my job as it gave me something normal to do. Recovery was a slow process, but I drank less and been sober now for four plus years and smiled more. I lived cheap and earned good money, so I made a point of buying myself a nice gift for my birthdays, a VR headset, a motorcycle, Lego, etc. And last year I moved from my crappy apartment and bought a small house. It was an old dream of mine to have my own garage and a garden to care for. This has boosted me even more. So my life is okay now. I still got problems, I've been on antidepressants for the last few years. And while they help, it's not in a happy way. They simply remove the dark thoughts and replace them with dead ones. My trust in other people is close to non-existent. 
I've tried dating, but only been on two dates with two different women. It's really hard to speak like a normal person when it comes down to it. And what would I tell a potential partner when she asks about my family? Oh, you know, they accused me of a heinous crime and we're not talking anymore. But I didn't do it, I swear. My field is very male dominated, so the only woman I really speak to is my therapist, who I like a lot. If this text was difficult to follow, I apologize. I'm not good with words on the best of days, and I started rambling a bit when it all came back to me. It's already getting long so I will fast forward to my current issue. A few days ago, I received a text from my mother. It felt unreal and I was scared to open it at first, so I just stared at the notification for hours before opening it. Yesterday, another text followed. Translated, they basically say, Hi Opie, it's been so long since we talked. We miss you and want to know how you're doing. Here she writes a long text about my sisters and how my nieces and nephews are getting big. I didn't even know I was an uncle. Know that we love you and always will. Mom and Dad. Then the second text. Hi Opie. We understand if you don't want to talk to us after what happened, but please listen. Last month, the subject of you was brought up at a family gathering. During this, Eve was downplaying everything that had happened to her. It got so awkward that she finally admitted that nothing happened and that she probably just dreamt it. We were all appalled by this. When we last spoke, we wanted to protect Eve and did the only thing we thought we could do. We know that's not excusing how you were treated. What Eve did was wrong and we're all angry at her. We have called everyone that knew and told them the truth. We all want to speak with you and your sisters want you to meet their families. Please write back if you can find it and you to forgive us. Mom and Dad. So yeah. That's my situation right now. I haven't answered, but they no doubt know I've seen it. Truth be told, I'm seething. So many old terrible memories are now stirring again. I don't want to forgive them, and I wouldn't trust myself to be in the same room as them right now. Part of me wants to call my family and unleash everything on them, to guilt them with everything I went through until they all hit their rock bottom. Then dedicate my life to make my cousin's life as miserable as possible. The other part wants to ignore them, and continue with my okayish life, with my motorcycle and my garden to keep me company. I don't have any friends. The only people I speak to are my coworkers, but we're not really close. I've called my therapist's clinic, but they told me she's on vacation and won't be available for weeks, and I don't want anyone else but her. So that leaves internet strangers. So please, where to go from here? Do I ignore them and continue as is? Or do I answer? And if so, what to even write? I'm pretty sure meeting them in person would be a bad idea for a foreseeable future, but I'm not even sure how my life can improve from picking up those old threads. As embarrassing as it may sound, I've dreamed about the day when they apologized for them to throw themselves to the ground and kiss my feet. Texting seems so anticlimactic now. Wait until your therapist comes back. I understand it will be a couple of weeks, but it will be worth it. Let her guide you on what to do and when to do it so that you can do this in a healthy way whether it's to not ever talk to them or build a relationship back. It's okay to leave your family on red. They will just have to deal with it until she gets back. Wishing you the best. To be honest, I didn't have the mindset to think that I could wait that long. I just heard weeks and thought it might as well be years. Thanks, I think I'll do that. You owe your family absolutely nothing. Take your time, think it through, and proceed with caution. You got this. This. They cut off Opie based on false allegations without even hearing him out. He suffered for a decade due to their actions. He owes them nothing and should take the time to determine what is best for him moving forward. They don't get to jump back into his life with a, we're sorry, after that. I can't imagine my family doing that to me. I think you need to really sit and consider what is going to have the best impact on your own life. Having them back in it again or keeping them away. The whole issue around forgiveness needs to be put aside. What is going to give you the best life going forwards? I can't answer this question for you. I can tell you how I would look at it, and I'm going to. But you need to largely ignore what I'm about to say, and think only of you. If having your entire family back in your life including Eve is going to make your life better, then do it without hesitation. My own thoughts. 1. I didn't see an apology in those texts. I saw them blame Eve for their behavior, not themselves. 2. Their love for you was conditional. Like a tap, they turned it off and then back on again. 3. The damage is done. You say you have no friends and struggle with relationships. That probably wouldn't be the case if not for how they treated you, but I don't see how the solution to that can be reached through a relationship with them. 
You can solve these problems, but I don't think they are going to help with that. 4. Not sure how meeting your sisters and their perfect families and kids and the happy lives they built while ostracizing you is going to help you one bit. 5. I'm getting the impression that Eve hasn't had anything like the same treatment for lying as you got for doing nothing. That means you are, at some point, likely to come across her at a family gathering. 6. Not one member of your family tried to stay in contact with you, even under the radar. If you'd gone to prison, I'd have expected at least some to stand by you. That is meant to be what family do. 7. There is absolutely no amount of shouting or anger that will get what you want from them. Don't do it. If you decide to tell them to sod off, the way to hurt them is not that way. The way is to text them about all the effects they have had on you like you have written here. Then tell them you want no contact, as you need time to heal. 8. Do not, under any circumstances, contact or have any communication with Eve. Don't think about her. You are never going to even try to get revenge, nor should you. The salient point here isn't Eve's lie. It's the fact that your family never even listened to you and abandoned you on zero evidence. Even if you had done it, family is unconditional. They made it conditional. Eve isn't the real criminal here. She just showed up how shallow the family love was. Yeah, the fact that mom said sisters want son to meet sisters' families? That sound a lot more like they don't really care about their brother. They only want to show off their own lives and how well they're doing. If they really have genuine feelings of guilt and remorse, they would try to make it about him and not themselves. We want to know how you're doing. We want to know about your life. We want to catch up on time with you. We want to be a part of your life, not the other way around. I don't know. That part about the sisters wanting him to meet their families and not the families wanting to meet him was the most prominent part of the BS apology that stuck out to me. Like no one really cares about his well-being, but more about their own lives. Really sounds like the apology was about themselves and not about their son. I wouldn't respond. My 21 female fiancé, 22 male, broke the engagement off because of his sister. I'm not sure if this will get any replies, but I need advice. My now ex-fiancé broke the engagement off because his sister told him a lie about me. Let's call him John and her Susan. So this all started June 17th. John and I were driving his sister around because she had recently totaled her truck. Once we dropped her off at home, John informed me that his sister told him I don't want kids. I have never discussed kids with Susan before. When we first started dating, I told him how important it was for me to have kids, and we have always been on the same page about it. We have been together three years, we had a solid relationship, and were always able to talk things out in a healthy way. Back in November, Susan was served divorce papers, and ever since then, it has been all about Susan. John started hanging out with her more. We made our plans around Susan. John started going out with Susan more than he would take me out. At the time, I didn't think anything of it because she needed some support. However, about three months ago, John stopped going out on dates with me and started going out with Susan without me. He refused to do anything with me, including simple things such as taking our dog for a walk. When he told me what Susan said about me not wanting kids, I tried reassuring him that what she said wasn't true and that I do want kids in the future and there's nothing I want to be more than being a mom. John told me he felt like I was lying and that he wanted to separate, but still be in a relationship until we can sort this out. So I guess we are just dating at this point, and we started couples therapy. We have been living separate for about a week now. I start all the conversations, but John hasn't reached out to me once. Does anyone have any advice on what I should do? If more information is needed, I will provide, but that's the majority of it. There's a lot of little details about John and Susan's relationship. I can add those if needed. He's done you a favor in the long run. Marriage with a puppet of a partner that dances to the tune of what other people tell them is a very lonely place. It's why I often use this quote on here. It's not what they said, it's the fact that you listened. Dude, you're 21. Why are you in a rush to get married? And frankly, why would you want to marry someone who drops you so suddenly? I'm not in a rush to get married, but I want a family. I'm not interested in partying like most of this generation. There is a wealth of things to do between having a family and partying. You could learn hobbies, you could get in therapy, you could travel, you could make new friends, you could save money, you could go to school or work on your career. The only options at 21 are not popping out some kids or partying. You can have a family at any time. Let me add my voice to the other commenters. Your fiancé was already looking for a way out. Susan may very well not have said anything to him. He could be lying himself to come up with a better sounding reason to break up with you. 
Do not accept his idea of separating but being in a relationship. That is extremely unfair to you. I personally think that the relationship is over. Even if Susan did lie to him, he grasped that lie to justify ending things. He has not tried to contact you once in a week. That is not someone trying to work on things and not someone you want to marry. Good luck with couples counseling. That's the only thing you can do. But why do you want to marry someone who doesn't trust your word? What will happen when you do have kids and she tells him more lies? Also, why is she getting divorced? It's not because of lying by any chance. Because her ex lied about wanting kids and was cheating on her from what I was told. I wouldn't trust that version of events to be honest, given she seems to be the liar. And seeing as she's the one that was served the divorce papers, implying he's the one asking for a divorce. If you have contact with him, I'd personally reach out and ascertain his version, because this lady might be pathological. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. This is also the second time she's lied about me that I know of.